Hello, young ceramic student. Today I'm going to show you the basics of how to throw on the wheel. Specifically, we're going to look at how to make a half pot. Later on in a different video, we'll talk about how to shape your clay. Uh, so this video is for anyone who really hasn't sat down at a wheel yet. So this is our basic, most common wheel. And there's a few things, a few safety things we have to first understand before we start throwing our clay. Whenever you're throwing on the wheel, you're always going to want to have an apron. It's going to protect from splashes of clay. You still might get a little bit of dirt on you, but remember, we only use uh, white body clays, which means they don't stain your clothes. So you don't have to get too worried, but I know it's not always fun to go to your next period with some dirt on you. So make sure you have an apron. Along with the apron, you want to always make sure that your apron is secured around your back. Our aprons have two drawstrings, and some of my students, for some reason, will just put on those aprons and let the drawstrings dangle down. The problem with that is that when this wheel's spinning, if for any reason one of those drawstrings gets caught, it's going to actually start to reel in that string and eventually it's going to pull tight. And I've had students who start to get sucked into the clay uh, and it's really kind of scary. So if that happens, it's not like it's life or death or anything. Just calmly remember to put both feet down and to stop your wheel. Just gentle pressure. Okay? But in order to avoid that, just make sure you tie your drawstrings. The other safety thing that we need to make sure is anyone who has long, beautiful hair, anytime you're throwing on the wheel, you have to remember to tie your hair back. Because for that same reason, if your hair for some, somehow gets caught underneath and, and gets stuck on that wheel head, it's going to wind it up and it could pull a little chunk of your hair out, which nobody wants that to happen. And the last safety thing is our shoes. Whenever we're throwing on the wheel, we need to make sure that we have shoes that strap onto our feet. That means you can wear sandals if you want, as long as they have straps. Flip-flops aren't gonna work because when this wheel's cruising and you need to stop it, it's gonna probably launch that flip-flop off your foot, which is no good, okay? Before we, so now that we've got the safety stuff taken care of, we wanna make sure that we have all the proper tools. So there's really only four tools that you need to get started on the wheel. You need to get a bucket, you want it about halfway full with water. You need a sponge, you need a needle tool, and you need a rib, okay? And all these tools will be available on my desk. Any tools that we get out, we need to make sure that we clean them and put them back, which I know sounds really silly and obvious, but for some reason students leave tools all over the place and it's frustrating, okay? So I've got some clay here. Remember, before we do anything with our clay, we need to make sure that we've wedged it and checked that it doesn't have any air and that there's no stuff in here, okay? So I've got a little bit of clay. The first question that I commonly get when someone tries to throw on the wheel is how much clay do I use? The amount of clay depends upon two things. It depends upon the, your size as a person and your comfort level or your experience level. So obviously, if you're a beginning ceramic student, then your experience level is probably low. So I tell people in general terms, a piece of clay that's about the size of a softball is a good size piece of clay. Now, if you have really tiny hands and you put that softball in your hand and it just feels really big, then you can tear some off and make it a little smaller. If you're a big football player and you've got big hands and that, you know, that size of clay feels tiny, then go ahead and use something a little bit bigger. It's just important that you're comfortable. You'll be way more successful if you're comfortable with your clay. So this right here, I feel, is a good starter size clay. It's about a softball. So to begin, uh, before I turn anything on, I'm gonna take my clay and I'm gonna just pat it into a ball. Um, it makes sense to make it as round as possible because if I put a block of clay on here, now I have to uh, center a cube, which is difficult to do. So I'm going to take this clay, I'm going to lean over, and I'm going to look straight down, and I just want to make my best guess of where the very middle of my wheel head is. This is our wheel head, okay? This piece right here is our wheel well, and it does come out. It's what catches all of the water. Um, when you go to clean your wheel, you don't need to pull this out. We'll talk about that later. Um, but this is, so we've got a wheel head, we've got a wheel well, and then this is the front of our wheel, okay? 
So I lean over my clay. I'm going to make sure I think that's in the middle, and I'm going to give it a little push. Okay? I'm just going to push it down. Then I'm going to take my thumb, and I'm going to go all the way around. And this is called anchoring. And I'm going to anchor my clay to the wheel head. And that's going to help it be nice and stuck. So now I'm going to turn the wheel on. The wheel is going to be kind of loud. In order to turn it on, we reach underneath the left-hand side. And you're going to see there's a, it's a light switch, basically. So I'm going to turn that on. And then our pedal is down here where our left foot goes. And that's what's going to make the wheel actually move. So the wheels are loud, which means I need to talk louder. Uh, but this also is a good reminder that um, when all the wheels are going, if you need help, then you need to you know, wave your hands. You need to be able to catch my eyes, because I can't always hear you, especially if you're soft-spoken and you're saying, help, I need some help, Mr. Frampton. I won't hear it, OK? So I've got my clay secure. I've got all my tools. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of water on my clay. Now these, these metal wheels, they're called locker bees, basically full speed. So don't be intimidated. I'm just going to press all the way down and I'm starting to apply some water. The first thing I want you do, to do is I just want you to touch and feel the clay because the clay is slimy. And for some of you, this is really the first time you've experienced something like this and it's going to feel a little weird. And that's okay, but you're just going to get acquainted with the clay. Once you feel like, okay, all right, I'm okay with this spinning piece of dirt in front of me, now we can begin the process of making a half pot. There's three steps to making a half pot. The first step is we've got to get the clay centered. Step one, center. So what we're going to do, regardless if you're right or left-handed, I tell all my students, you're going to take your left hand. Remember, make the L. That's your left hand. I'm going to take my left elbow, and I'm going to secure it somewhere on my body. I typically use my hip. You're going to bend your wrist at a 90 degree angle like this. And with that elbow secured to your body, what this allows us to do is it allows us to use our body weight, our leverage. Because throwing on the wheel, is not, it's not really about how strong you are. I've had big football players who sit on the wheel and they try and muscle the clay into the center and it just doesn't work because they don't know how to use their leverage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hand nice and flat, okay? Bend it at an angle like this. Our elbow's locked in. Then our right hand, we're also gonna keep it nice and flat. You wanna think about your hands almost like two boards. Okay, and then you're gonna lean on the clay. So I'm just gonna lean and hold my pressure. And I lean and I lean and I lean. And you can start to see, as I apply pressure, the clay starts to get centered. Now, what does, I'm, I'm using this term centered quite a bit. Um, centered means it's perfectly in the middle. When something is off center, it has a big wobble to it. It goes like this. So if you ever ask me if your clay is off-centered, I'm going to say, well, is it dancing on the wheel head or is it standing still? So I'm going to get on here. I'm going to lean. I'm going to apply pressure, equal pressure from the top and the bottom. I'm going to hold it there and I'm going to slowly release. And you can see up there, it's centered. Now, sometimes we have to focus more on one part than the other. So I'm going to focus on the bottom here, apply pressure, hold it there and slowly release. Now down here at the bottom, there's some parts that are kind of bumpy. When you're beginning to throw on the wheel, I'll recommend that you take your rib, okay, and you hold it with the flat edge like this. You're gonna brace it and just allow it to just kind of cut into the clay like that. And that's gonna take care of that base. As you get more experienced, you'll be able to save some of that clay but for now, we want to be able to help you be as successful as possible as you're just learning. Okay, so a center piece of clay kind of just looks like a rollo that's spinning on the wheel. How do I know it's centered? Well, it isn't really moving around too much. If I hold my finger up against it, you know, it, it touches my finger all the way. 
this might not be perfectly centered, but for a beginning student, I'd say good job. Okay, so that's step one, centering your clay. Step two, we have to open the inside. So there's two parts to step two. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hands, we're gonna bring our wrists together, we're gonna bring a thumb, and I like to brace my other thumb like this, and I'm gonna sit it on top of my clay and just slowly move it towards the middle. As I move it towards the middle, I start to form a little button. And that little button tells us right where the middle is. Okay? Doesn't have to be that tall, but I wanted to make it easy for you guys to see it. So now that I know where the very middle is, I'm gonna bring my hands, I'm gonna let my hands just rest on the clay. I'm not trying to squeeze it. I'm gonna rest my thumb right on top of that button. And I'm gonna press straight down into my clay. I'm gonna go down about an inch or so. I'm gonna take my water, I'm gonna put some water in there. And I'm gonna slowly, I'm gonna think like a drill. And I'm gonna drill down until I think I'm about a half inch, or the technical, the technical thickness is three eighths. Three eighths of an inch is the perfect thickness in ceramics. So I need, to, I need to find out if the bottom is actually 3 eighths of an inch or not. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my needle tool. And so just pretend that this sponge was the bottom of my clay. I can reach in and I can have my needle tool go through the clay and touch the metal. And I can reach down with my finger and touch where the clay is. And if I hold everything still and pull it out, then I can find out the thicknesses of things. All right, so I'm gonna do that inside of my clay. I'm gonna go down through the clay till I touch the metal. I'm gonna touch where the clay is. I'm gonna hold on to everything and lift it up. Now we want this to be about three eighths of an inch or another way to look at it is about pinky thick. So I hold that up to my pinky. It looks like it might be a little bit thicker than my pinky. So instead of just going on, I'm gonna make sure to go back. I'm gonna press it down just a little bit. Okay, so I turn my wheel back on, I press the gas, okay, and I'm gonna, I can use my thumb or if I wanna use my fingers, I'm gonna reach down and I'm gonna press down just a little. Now I'm pretty confident that that's gonna be three eighths of an inch. So we'll reach in, okay, let's get right here on the side. Okay, there we go, three eighths of an inch. Now I'm gonna speed my wheel back up. Okay, so step one was center. Step two, we open the middle, but now we need to widen it out. It's too skinny on the inside to us to really work with. So I'm gonna put my right hand on the outside. I'm gonna reach in with whichever fingers are comfortable, but I wanna make sure that my thumb is on the back side of my palm. So like this, and that allows, gives me a little leverage that I can widen the bottom. So I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna pull straight across, and I wanna pull it till it's about maybe two inches or so, enough that I can get a hand in there, okay? So that right there, we've kept our clay centered, right? We've kept it centered. We've, we've widened the base. We want to make sure that the bottom is nice and flat. Our walls are nice and straight. So those will be the things that we're looking for. So step one, we centered. Step two, we open. Now the final step, step three, we're gonna pull it up, okay? Now in order to pull up our clay, and this is what most people think about or visualize when they see someone working on the wheel. There's a couple little tricks we can do. Uh, we can take our sponge and with our finger, we can just press a little bit on the bottom here. That's going to give us a little indent to lift up. We can do the same thing on the inside. And what's going to happen is before I actually do the pull, I want you just to kind of think about it. 
We're gonna create pressure from the outside and the inside, and we're gonna hold that pressure. We don't wanna squeeze any harder. We're just gonna hold that pressure and slowly slide up. What that's gonna do is that's gonna press the clay wall and it's gonna rise up and give us some height. So I like beginning students to start with a sponge. And how I tell them to hold their sponge is I tell them to make a peace sign, okay? And they're gonna use that peace sign. They're gonna give their sponge a little hug with their fingers. And then they put the two fingers up in the corner, just like that. Now, as you get comfortable and you wanna change things, that's okay. But this is just an easy way to start. So now I'm gonna reach in my inside hand. I'm gonna make sure that my fingers are right across, okay? I'm gonna create a little bit of pressure and I just make sure to hold that pressure and slide straight up, nice and slow. Okay, nice and slow. When I get to the top, I'm gonna to stop for a second and I'm gonna let go sideways. And you can see that my clay got a little bit taller. Now on the top here, if our rim gets a little uneven, we can put two fingers on the side, one finger on top, we can compress that. And we wanna, after each pull, we wanna use our fingers. We wanna feel the thickness of the clay. We want our wall, our ceramic wall, to be pinky thick, which is about 3 eighths of an inch, all the way. So up here, it feels close to pinky thick. But down at the bottom, it feels thicker, which tells me that I need to pull it more. So I'm gonna lean over here. I'm gonna create some pressure. I'm gonna slowly rise up. Okay, when I get to the rim, I'm gonna hold it for a second. I'm gonna let go sideways. Woo! Sorry, I slipped there. Okay. <laughs> I got my camera person all clay, covered in clay. But they're doing a great job. Okay, so now, if the rim of our ceramic starts to widen, we can also uh, use our hands and we can collar it in a little bit, just gently slide up. Um, but there's a little bit of clay in the bottom here. I'm actually gonna leave it so that we have something to talk about when we cut it in half. Um, so if this was your half pot and you, you uh, were trying to fulfill the assignment, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a half pot that's about as tall as a needle tool. So this, we would want to try and push ourselves and get a little bit more height out of this. We also want to have walls that are pinky thick all the way up and down. And then we want a base that's nice and flat on the inside and also about pinky thick. So how do we tell those things? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use our needle tool. We're going to cut down one side and then we're gonna go straight across. We're gonna cut down the other side, and then we'll reach in and we just connect those two lines, okay? And then we're gonna peel off one half and just pull straight across and it'll just pop right off. And now we can look at this half pot because there's good things and there's things that we need to keep working on. And that's what's important about half pots. They give us uh, some visual things that we can see that we need to keep working on. So this wall, it's pretty good. It's pinky thick all the way. It looks like at the bottom here, it's a little bit thicker than a pinky. The base, uh, the walls are nice and straight, which are good, which is good. The base, uh, it looks like it's about pinky thick and got a little bit thin here in the bottom. So if this was a student's pot that I was grading, I would say, okay, it looks like we've got a good amount of height. We're at about five, a little over five inches. We're not quite to six inches yet. We've got good walls, but it looks like this bottom corner is where we need to keep working. So the next time you did a half pot, we'd like to see, or I'd like to see you apply more pressure and slowly rise up that clay wall, okay? To try and get that even all the way across. Half pots um, are worth 20 points. And so this is a really good half pot, it's really close. I'd give this probably a 17 or an 18 out of 20. When you're all done with your half pot, you're going to just pull it off, 
Okay, you're gonna take that clay, you can put it in our slot bin. You're gonna clean the wheel head and then you can try another one or you can actually clean up for the day if you need to. It, uh, remember, you can't attach fresh clay to a wet wheel head, so you'll actually have to take some time here and get this clean before you get new clay on there, or it'll just slip off. Secret word, you thought I was done. The secret word is spinners are winners.